Hello and welcome. This is Brandon Wendell once again, taking a look at the equity futures markets for this week, giving you a little heads up, doing some analysis, see what's going on. Uh, the inverted head and shoulders I mentioned last week, we've obviously followed through, broken very strong to the upside, almost reached the target. We've done probably about 80% of the move to the measured move, which would be the height of the head extended upwards. And maybe all we get is we're starting to move sideways and we're seeing some weakness coming into price. It doesn't mean we're going to pull back too far. We may just get some sort of retracement before we continue higher. If we want to look at this in a little more detail, I'll drop down to the four hour chart. And I did the wrong thing there. Hang on. There we go. Right keystrokes help. Anyway, we can take a look even a little more detail looking at the Fibonacci extensions to give us a probable turning points for our impulses versus corrections. You can see that we had an impulse up, correction down, and this impulse pretty much stalled right on time at the 0.618 extension. If we do continue to the upside, it should take us just beyond that Fibonacci, uh, sorry, just beyond the measured move from the inverted uh, head and shoulders to basically 4587. That'll be the next Fibonacci extension there. And if we're going to retrace before we start moving up. It doesn't look like we got too much. Well, I guess there is some weakness. What I'm noticing right now is we have prices moving to the upside here over several highs. However, if you look at the indicator, it's actually moving to the downside, and that is a negative divergence. Usually with a negative divergence, you end up seeing prices retreat. You see it's been getting some weakness there. So we should get a pullback. And what we can do to figure out where this pullback is likely, likely to go is measure the previous move up. And what I need to do in this case is bring back the full Fibonacci retracement numbers. So I'll go ahead and do that. Should be. Uh, 20, no, I'm sorry. 236, 38.2, 50%, and then 61.8%. So when I put those in, what you can see is that as we started to retrace, we've already gone 23.6%. That's the first retracement point. And we can't seem to close below that level. That's a very weak retracement, which would suggest that prices are actually very, very strong. We did go a little bit lower, but couldn't break the 50% retracement. Doesn't look like we hit any kind of demand there. But overall, this looks like the, the price is still extremely strong and very, very bullish. And therefore, we're likely to continue the move to the upside here in the markets. We can drop this down to a 60 minute time frame to get an idea of wrong button again. On a 60 minute time frame, get an idea of what we might be doing starting Monday morning through the week. And really, it just looks choppy. So be a bit careful. We do see that we had a little choppiness. This was a demand zone, I believe, from the 15 minute time frame. So, short time frame on the 60, we have lower high. We have not made a lower low, but that's what I'm going to have to be watching for. If we do come down again, let's clean this up actually. We'll go ahead and start with a fresh chart here. There we go. And now on the 60 minute chart, once again, we can take a look and see we do have a lower high. So there's high, lower high. We have a low that was put in, but we have not made the lower low yet to actually take us, take us into a downward trend. If we do see that, we break to a fresh low, we'll also likely go below 40 on the RSI, which would indicate bearish trend. Until that happens, I would look for buying opportunities. As soon as we break 45.15 though, if you get stopped out, on any buying opportunities, then I would look for shorts only because we're likely to continue down. If we continue down, two things we can look for. One would be demand on this time frame, but honestly, if it's a 60 minute trend, the four hour demand is the one we'd be looking for. Looking at the four hour chart, we actually do have a demand zone that makes a pretty good target. Just below, we have rally base rally. So it could be either wick to wick or because it's just one candle, I usually do the wick to wick, but it could just come down Kind of the high there, 44.9350. I don't see us going much further than that, to be honest with you. We're still extremely bullish in this market. So again, if we continue with that confirmation by breaking 45.15, we're likely to keep going down to just under the 4,500 hold number to about 44.9350 before we get a little bounce. You can see the origin of that buying pressure on this time frame as well. But that looks to be where we're headed. We might have a little stumble on the 60 minute demand. But again, if the trend on the 60 minutes down, usually needs the four hour demand zone to halt that downward trend. So we have a tested portion of a zone here. Usually it means you go to the untested portion before you bounce. So it could be a little choppy there, but again, it all depends on us being able to break the 45.15 a quarter. 
taking this down to a 15 minute time frame for Sunday we've opened up already and we're just kind of back and forth a little bit not really seeing a whole lot of strength coming out of this market doesn't really even look like there's a good entry point for another short either so just be patient wait to see if something comes up you can see we overshot this area of supply and then started moving down but we don't have enough strength we're not even getting below 50, uh, 40 on the rsi on this time frame so really this looks sideways and choppy so going back to the bigger picture on the 60 minute time frame one of two things is going to happen either we start a bullish trend or a bearish trend or well, actually three things we could go sideways the big determination is if we take out the previous high or the previous low so whichever gets taken out first 4415 that would take us down to 4493 However, if we come back up and rally and break 45, 45, 75, then we would be focused on the bulls and all-time highs. Once again, taking us up to those measured moves I mentioned earlier. We can move over to the NASDAQ and take a look and see what's going on there. Let's see, where's my NASDAQ chart? Here it is. On the big picture on the daily, you can see we've reacted to the origin of the selling pressure we had back in early September and are showing kind of a bull flag where prices rallied sharply we're tracing kind of down and sideways, but not dropping very quickly. We're just losing a little bit of momentum. And if we were to look at the Fibonacci extensions, not sure if we had a measured move or not. Oh, we have. You can see we stalled out right in the area of 1.272, or 127% of the previous impulse. So, breaking this down a little bit more, we'll go to the 240-minute chart. I hit the wrong key again. Bear with me. On the four hour time frame, looks like we are getting kind of a, a widening or what we call broadening formation on this time frame. Just first glance, what I see is we are making lower lows, but at the same time, we were also making higher highs. This is usually corrective in nature. So, this is what we call running correction or broadening formation. Usually, this we can break to the upside after this kind of plays out. We saw this on the S&P on a bigger time frame, I believe, a while back. Uh, if we go back to that S&P chart, I'll show you. If we go down to a daily chart, I'm trying to remember where this broadening formation began. There it is. Uh, basically, what happened was we kept making these higher highs, as you can see. And we kind of widened out on the downside too and eventually started breaking a little bit higher we got a little wider on the movie on a false breakout and then the real break to the upside so that's kind of what we're seeing on the nasdaq yet on a smaller time frame rather than the dailies is on the 240 so be cautious of any breaks to the downside the real reason that i look at this is because i think it's going to end up breaking upwards you can see we do have a four hour supply zone that we came into with negative divergence and that's what gave us the move down that we're currently experiencing. Take a look. What's this? It lets me. Come on. <laughs> Keep getting the wrong keystroke. There we go. Anyway, that's what I want to do. You can see we had the rally base drop right there. And that's kind of what we reacted to. I said we had a divergence because you can see prices were making those higher highs. But the indicator, which is momentum on the RSI here, was showing... A loss of momentum as we came into those highs so we pull back no big deal well we may pull back towards the origin of the re previous rally or just a fibonacci retracement back down before we continue to march higher and now we don't have any fresh supply overhead as i look back there's not really a good zone here we have a leg and a leg and let's see that's about it there's really nothing there until we get to some all-time highs i believe scroll that back yep so what are we looking at for this week? So far, we've got, like I said, this widening or broadening formation likely to break to the upside. We just got to wait and see when it breaks. If we were to look at some of the retracement of the previous impulse up that we're currently experiencing, once again, I need to bring back, there we go, the measurements for the inside there. And that again would be twenty-three six. 38.250 and 61.8. You can see that we came back exactly to the 50% retracement already. And this may be the end of the retracement. We did not get below 40 on that pullback. So this is suggesting that we may be done with the pullback and getting ready to rally out of this area. 
So I'd be looking a little bit more bullish here on the NASDAQ. Let's go down to a 60 minute time frame. Let's see if there's any detail there. And for the most part, we kind of based at this sideways motion before it rallied. So again, kind of lining up right with that Fibonacci retracement of the 50%, just getting sideways momentum before we possibly pick up as, well, we were bearish. As you can see, we went below 40 here on the RSI. That's a bearish sign. But it looks as though we might be done with that bearish momentum and getting ready to rally again. You can see we're starting to pop back above 40, so we're losing our bearish momentum here. Starting to show higher lows both on price and on the indicator, so a little bit more strength coming in. If we don't, if we do end up failing, again, we watch for the next Fibonacci retracement, or you can see there's a little bit of demand here at the origin of the overall move. Going down to the 15 minute time frame. Now, this is definitely looking like a little bit of supply overhead. I'm going to clear the chart. There we are. And it looks like a little bit of chop right now after a big drop. And we do have rally, base, and drop right there. That's our supply zone. It's going to need a little bit of momentum to get through that. As of right now, we do have a positive divergence suggesting that for Sunday night going forward, we probably will see bullish momentum carrying us upwards. So, and that's why I was suggesting that this is underlying strength. It may not be the leader though, we will find out. You can see that the prices made fresh lows while the indicator, the momentum was not making fresh lows. That's the positive divergence usually leads to a move upwards, probably to retest the uh, 15,415, uh, maybe by Monday morning, maybe midday Monday is what I'm looking at for a pullback. And as this moves up, I'll look to see if a new demand zone forms because that's what I'll look to buy for a new breakout. Moving over to the Russell, since I have that right here. Once more, we can look at the daily time frame here. And this is very ugly. You can see we've made lower high than a higher high. We've got higher lows. So overall, we are on a daily uptrend, just not very strong. And well, I don't really have a great trend line there. Probably this one would be better. There we are. Yeah, it's almost there. Anyway, if I were to send it off to the right, you can see that we've got a nice uptrend that's kind of developing here. And we're seeing not a strong trend in either direction. We barely went above 60 on the RSI. And, you know, we're definitely not getting below 40. So that's suggesting some bullish activity going on in this time frame. We don't really have any overhead supply. I mean, we kind of had this drop base drop. Most likely we'll see it better if I use a continuous contract rather than the specific. But this one's been tested multiple times, so we're more likely to go through it. And we drop down to the four hour time frame to get an idea of what's going on there. Once more, I'll start with a clean chart. There we go. And demand way down here. Let's see, do we have anything else above? Nothing really wonderful. We just kind of stair stepped on the way up. I don't think we're going to pull back that deep anyway. I think we've already done our retracement. As you can see, we had a nice big impulse up. And a retracement back down already. I'm gonna fix that default. There we go. We get the ratios in there too. So, like I said, you can see we pulled back basically 61.8% of the previous move and started a new impulse up. Out of that new impulse up, we can even measure that to see what kind of retracement we've been able to achieve because we did stall out from our highs. This was the most recent impulse up. And once again, we did a 61.8% retracement. But we do see there's lots of bullish activity because we couldn't barely get below 50, let alone 40 on the RSI. So it's suggesting that we're getting ready to resume and break out to some new highs here. So if that's the case, what we can do is measure where those highs might end up. And we use the Fibonacci extension, go from low to high to the pullback. And projections are taking us higher to... 2306, 2328, 4, 2344.1. So, if we want to jump in and ride that move to the upside, we've got to figure out where we want to do it. There's really nothing left here to get in. We kind of missed the opportunity here on the pullback on the 22nd into some of that buying pressure. Not a good trend right now. You know, we've been above 60 and below 40, so really need to resolve this trend issue and get a little more strength and some sort of a demand zone we can buy before we want to jump into this. 
If I go down to the 15 minute time frame on the intraday, ugly. Doesn't look like it's anything great. We had a little bit of selling pressure come in right here, but the saving grace is for price. When we bounce off that supply, we could not make fresh lows in price, number one. And number two, we couldn't get above 60 on the RSI. So I think we're going to have a little bit of weakness starting off at the beginning of the week and maybe push a little sideways before we start to get a rally here. Take a look at the Dow futures. Dow futures also had a bit of an inverted head and shoulders on the daily time frame. You can see it if I highlight it now by this. Left shoulder, head, right shoulder. So if we take the measured move of the head, and extend it right from the breakout. We still have room to go, don't we? Once more, we can also use our trusty Fibonacci tools to let us know what's going on. We had a positive divergence, by the way, that broke us out of the lows. This is confirmed in a bullish trend. The reason why you have the positive divergence right here, and that's the warning signal that the trend is changing. The confirmation is here when you made a low in price where the RSI could not get below 40. That's the confirmation the trend has reversed and is going up. So as you can see, we've got a, a measured move based on the inverted head and shoulders. It should take us up to 36,290. Now using the FIB extensions, let's see what we got there. We've got the low impulse up to this high, retrace back, and we are currently stalling out a duplication of the previous impulse. So as we pull back, I'd be looking to buy, and this looks a little bit stronger than the other markets. So honestly, that's the, probably the better play is to go long in the Dow versus the Russell or the NASDAQ or the S&P. So if we do get a bit of a pullback, we uh, will look to see where that might end up. There is a little rally base rally here on this time frame. Now it's kind of a large candle compared to the move out. So not a great demand zone. We're going to look to see if we can fine tune this on a smaller time frame, and make it a little bit better for us. But that's what I'm thinking is likely to happen here. So we'll go down to the 60 minute time frame, And you can see we are staying above 60, can't get below 40, that's bullishness. And there may be a slightly higher area of demand than the one I was originally looking at. On the 60 minute time frame, we do have this area, which made a, or did it make a fresh high? Let's see, we got a high here, 35, 536. The previous high was 35, 541. So that failed to make a high on that breakout. That is not a good area of demand. Okay, the reason why, as I was just saying, when you have a good area of demand, strong buying pressure, you should break out the new highs. And this one failed. You had one breakout candle, no real follow through. So be careful. I don't know if this is going to work. Honestly, it's not even the origin of the move. The origin of the move is a little bit before that, right here. Drop, base, and rally. Oops, that didn't stick for some reason. So for the 60 minute time frame, the trend is somewhat bullish. Definitely agree with that. Although we're getting a little bit of weakness now. You can see our most recent high did not take the RSI above 60. So the fact that we failed to do that, that's a warning sign that trend is weak. It's not you know panic or anything like that. It's not telling you to start shorting either. What we would need to follow this up and start to see more bearish activity would be another high that fails to break this high. And if it also fails to break the RSI above 60. So those are the two things I'm going to be looking for this week. As we start moving up, we need to get above 35, 638, and we need to go above 60 on this four hour, sorry, 60 minute time frame for this trend to resume the bullish move up. At that point, we'll probably get some sort of a demand zone, maybe on the 15 minute or even the 60 minute chart to be able to trade long. Until that happens, I'm gonna be sitting back and waiting. We actually still have a little bit of weakness, as a matter of fact. There may even be a short opportunity. We have drop, base, 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 and drop right there. Now, once again, we failed to make new lows on the drop down, so actually I'm not gonna be able to short that. That just might be a pause in price, but the fact that we couldn't make fresh lows on that move down and we couldn't get below 40 tells me that's not a very good supply zone. So I think, you know, the Dow is definitely one of the more bullish indexes, but without any clear opportunities to buy or strengthen the trend, then I might just have to sit back and watch it. So what I'd probably look to do is going back to that 60 minute trend. Once I get confirmation that we're bullish once again, either again by breaking that high or going above 60 or some sort of another formation 
you know, we've definitely had lows that can't get below 40. We've had two of them. That's a bullish sign in itself. Right there and right there. But the fact that we can't break the new highs, that's definitely troublesome. So if we can start rallying for where we are currently, break to some new highs, that's going to give us that opportunity and that confidence to start going long. Looking back at the 15-minute chart, even if we do break down, I don't think I want to start shorting by any means. And the reason why is you've got a lot of demand here. Right here. And even a zone above that. And notice the big difference here. Rally base rally. On this little rally, we took out prior highs. Of course, we paused and rallied again for new highs. So this is actually the most powerful demand zone that I'm seeing right now on this 15-minute time frame. So that's a very good buying opportunity. The problem is if we don't make that high first, if we do even make the high first, we'd have to make a fresh low in order to test this. So it's going to be very difficult, but that's really where I like to buy 35.395, 35.375 if there's an opportunity there. If not, there's probably opportunities on other markets that are a little bit cleaner. I'll maybe take another look at this later this week to see how things have changed by Wednesday. Give us another update on YouTube and let you know kind of what's going on with the trend. But as of right now, it looks like we're going to be a little choppy slightly bullish on the equity markets but overall choppy so be very careful and pick your battles and be safe trade safe and trade well talk to you soon